Welcome back to Art Playground with Mrs. Vaughn. Introducing you to Paul Clay this week. Paul Clay went to art school, he was musical, he was very talented, but even when he came out of school, he knew he was lacking something. He was lacking color sense, and he spent many, many years trying to add the color he needed to his art. Eventually he got there, and it is so appreciated, his sense of color, that even books have been written. This is a children's book based on Castle and the Sun, which you will see coming up. Uh, he's really appreciated, but it took a lot of hard work for him to get there. Enjoy learning about Paul Clay. Paul Clay had a happy childhood with a German music teacher as a father and a Swiss singer as a mother. There was a lot of creativity in his family and he was an amazing violinist. But as he approached his teen years, he rebelled and decided that music was not what he wanted to do with his life. He felt drawn to the visual arts, much to the dismay of his parents. However, they did support him in following his passion. He attended the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich, Germany. He excelled in drawing, but seemed to lack any color sense, which really bothered him. So for two years, he traveled around Italy with a friend to study famous artists. When he came back, he continued to work on art, but was not finding what he was looking for. It took a trip to Tunisia in 1914. Uh, Tunisia is in North Africa for things to turn around for him and change his life. When he came home, he completed his first pure abstract painting using colors, rectangles, and a few circles. At this time, he said, color has taken possession of me. No longer, so I have to chase after it. I know it has a hold of me forever. Color and I are one, I am a painter. He continued to make art, but was also a teacher at the Bauhaus School of Art, Design and Architecture. He experimented with cubism, surrealism, abstract art, expressionism, and he created over 9,000 pieces in his lifetime. He died in 1940 at the young age of 60 of scleroderma, which is a hardening of the skin and is supposedly very painful. Our art project this week is based on Clay's Castle in the Sun. All right, artists, here is what we're going to do. You will need a ruler and a pencil and eraser to start this. And we're just going to be drawing parallel lines up and down of different heights. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us the basic outline of the castle. They can be wider, they can be more narrow. You get to decide. Now what I'm gonna start doing is adding tops and details to each of my buildings. So I like to do different types and styles of roofs on these buildings. So you will see just a nice variety of kind of castle looking tops. Some are just peaked, some look like um, a typical castle. Some look like flat topped, some have a little walkway. I have had some students do um, 
drawbridges, and a lot of other details which you are welcome to do on your own, but let's get the basic design first. So add your roofs, add some detail, and let's get going. So I'm just carefully going over what I did with Sharpie. Uh, I don't use a ruler on this. I can, I can uh, pretty closely follow the lines that I already drew using the ruler. If you wanna use the ruler, you can. Uh, the reason we're doing Sharpie on this is in the future we're gonna watercolor and the Sharpie kinda helps define the lines real clearly, which makes it a little easier to paint rather than just using pencil. Don't forget your son. Let's get ready to paint. So I have two different width brushes. I'm not sure what I'm gonna need. I have water, a paper towel to clean up things, and my watercolors. I am going to use this color wheel to help me do cool and warm colors. That is something I would love for you to work on today. Inside the castle, I'm going to do the cool colors, and outside the castle, I'm going to do the warm colors. If you wanna go free for all and do whatever you want, that is fine. That's just something I hope we can work on, learning the difference between cool and warm colors. As always with watercolors, I would like you to use a lot of water and a little paint. If you use a lot of paint, you can't see through watercolors, and it just doesn't give you the lovely color you can get from watercolors. So more water, less paint, and if you find your colors not bright enough, you can always go add more paint, but try to make it so you can see through it. That is the beauty of watercolors.
sure to hit the red button to subscribe to Art Playground.